You're listening to The Judith Regan Show on Sirius XM Stars. This is Judith Regan. We're back. A little bit later in the show, we have someone coming on who wrote a book called Why You're Not Married. Uh-oh. <clears throat> and she says it's because you're a bitch, you're shallow, you're a slut, you're crazy, you're selfish, you're a mess, you hate yourself, you're a liar, you're a dude. <laughs> she knows my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we forced Sherrod Small to stay because he is so funny. We love you. Thank you. You're a funny boy. Hi, okay, Sherrod. and Krista Ann, such a beautiful girl, Thank has you. walked in. And, uh, li- boy, you are a, you are such a beauty. Yeah, beautiful. she's a good girl, man. I know. Yeah. I'm logging everything up here for later. I know. <laughs> I know. Exactly. By the way, Penthouse, Cover Girl, Playboy, the whole thing. Oh, the mm-hmm. mercy. Right? The whole thing. She's been naked. You can look her up. Oh, don't worry. Naked. A few times. Naked, naked girls. Okay. And now you're doing a a new film because you're, Mm -hmm. are you still doing naked stuff? It depends. It depends yeah. on, on what, what? How I'm feeling? on what they pay you or how much you weigh. No, 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 no. It's definitely not. Um, it, I don't know. I, I guess I've kind of reached like the top that you can as far as like playboy. So I'd rather go. You know, out, out, out on the top. <laughs> okay, but like, well, how did you get into Playboy and Penthouse? What what made you do that? Um, Playboy. I went to a casting. I was I was nineteen, right. and I wound up booking the job. And then I was in like thirteen newsstand specials. Okay, but why? Um, why did you go? Like when I was nineteen, I was I I didn't go and yeah. I was go like to Playboy. Yeah. Work. I mean, yeah. um, I did have a little ce- a little cellulite. Now I have a lot more. I was the teeny. The first year, teeny. Yeah, I mean, it was the first year that I started modeling, and it was. I approached it like a, as if it was any other casting. Obviously, I was nervous, but I don't know. Like they were so okay, welcoming. Like, like, we were, we were not just... models. <laughs> no, no. But when I was mean... that age, when I was nineteen, I, I had know. a great body. Yeah. I was beautiful. Like I had the whole thing going on. Now I'm old and tired, and you know, falling apart. So you apart. say the guys no, at Playboy were could not... really welcoming, huh? They welcomed you. <laughs> so they were. They were, they were, they were okay like, with you I've, taking your clothes I've off. Never. Yeah. What a bunch of swell fellas. Aren't you shocked? No, yeah, but, but you'll be surprised. I mean, I've been in the industry ten years, and and they're not always welcoming. Regardless well, I would of what welcome you. Are, <laughs> yeah. Uh, does it change how men approach you and and the r- nature of your relationships with men? It does. Do they still want to have like girls who are kind of virginal? Do they still want girls who haven't taken their clothes off in public? Do I they, think. Do they think you're a slut? Um, you know, because I, you took I've been single off. for two years. Okay, now, that's good. That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's now good. we know why you <laughs> stayed. <laughs> yeah. He didn't, saw you come in and he was like, I'm staying. That's didn't it. Didn't Trump marry a Playboy girl? I mean, some. No, did, people always marry yeah. Playboy girls. Yeah. How, it's yeah. just. Uh, Howard, it's, what's it's that guy? The, the Playboy guy always marries them. Yeah. No, but, but it has it has. But affected. the type of guys that you attract, right. are they the type of guys that are just kind of sleazy and want they, you to have sex with other women? Oh, no, in front of that, them? That don't make you like sleazy. In the beginning, <laughs> they think it's so cool. <laughs> In the beginning, they oh, think yeah. it's so cool. Because they, like, oh, they can say, I'm dating like, a penthouse pet. And right? Yes. insecure. And then all of a sudden, when their friends start like putting, like, well, how do you know what she's doing? When Hannah, how, how do you know? And then right. all of a sudden, everything that was so hot and so amazing is all of a sudden like the demise. They of get insecure. Issue. Yeah. Okay, now here's Guys another. Are this so is so whack, right? They're so <laughs> disgusting. Now, I am so shocked that your parents thought this was a good idea. My well, daughter's 21. Mm. If she told me she wanted to do a penthouse or, or a Playboy, I would say, no, you can't. And I well, wouldn't I mean, her. it was 14 years of Catholic school when he was back. My oh daughter my went to 14 years of Catholic school. She went to Convent of the Sacred Heart. You know this sounds and, naughty, right? No, you know this is sexy. That's what my cousin's one. Yeah. <laughs> you just love this, don't you? Oh, the Catholic yeah. school stuff is like, yeah, <laughs> then what happened? Oh my God. Priscilla, nun went to Catholic school. <laughs> Priscilla went to Catholic school and her shocking behavior was like, I am in boys when we went to college. It was like, yeah. I'm I Would you do Playboy or Penthouse? Hell no. No? Why? Why? I've never been secure. With she my doesn't body. feel comfortable. Oh, but if you if you were if you if you had this body, would you do it? But she's got no. a good body. Too. She's no, got a great body. I mean, she, you know what? Take your top off and show your body. <laughs> Let you feel all insecure. We should be the. Like, we'll do a casting right here. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yes, I'm no, but seriously, my top off. you're hot. 
Would you do it? No. She wouldn't Why? even show I'm... her bottom at the at the at the beach. When I was she would, she would show her I top would... though. No, no. But she would like. Cover would you do her like hips. Jenny McCarthy and grow all that hair so that no one looks at it? <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> so Baby, weird. Please don't. Please don't. I don't get that at all. Disgusting. No, but don't you think that's weird that she's doing that? Yes. Uh, Come on. She's got to do something. Who wants to look at all that pubic she's hair? She's been in Playboy Nobody. 14 times, so she got to mix it up yeah. now. She's yeah. got to grow. She so she's going for the guys who are into lots armpit of... Armpit hair. Yeah, maybe there's... <laughs> Everything. Yeah. She's not going to shave her legs. Maybe there's right. a group of followers for would that. Would you do it? Would you do... Pl- uh, would you yes, get I would. Oh, not me? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, sure, you would do it. He's like, I would shoot it. Yeah, I would do it. Spread eagle. Why not? From behind, right? It'd be like this. Would you do gay porn? Oops, did I do that? (laughs) Now, Sarah, what about you? Would you do it? Would I? Uh, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say 100 percent no. Oh, see that? You're a little kinky. I mean, she's a little kinky. I just feel like yeah. if you said 100%. She can tell, no, right? Yeah. Totally. Listen, your body's only going to be that nice for Chris so Anna, long. Chris Anna, she can it. spot them. Think. Right? What do you well, think about for it? For me, it's like, I love being it? naked. Why not get paid for it? That's simple. True. It's so simple. No, but oh uh, do you... Uh, all right, so your parents though, your parents go to the parties. They look at the spreads. Like, if my it, father looked at yeah. a spread of me in Playboy, they I, don't I would look But don't you think no, there's no, something no. totally different between, like, Playboy and porn? I mean, like, Playboy is... Playboy and You want your father to see your vagina? Ah! Okay. No, 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 no. The number one rule I would, was I would, I would be oh so mortified. God. No, I told them I will bring you to any party you want. Just do not look beyond the cover. Do you know how much my but, dad hates Hugh Hefner? So t- topless is okay. <laughs> I don't want. My, well, I wouldn't want my father the cover, to see anything. No, the the cover. I I have clothes on. Actually, one my first cover. It's just you my have face. clothes on. Just what about face. nipples? No, no nipples. There's like. Nothing. It's there's no nudity. Oh come on! You don't think they looked? You know I'm about to pass out, right? I don't know. Come on! You know <laughs> that they I'm about to pass out. You know you just Dread love this. I said it. the word nipples, and he's like fainting. Yeah. Blood is flooding out of my head. Like if they he's look, I don't want to know. He's yeah. turning red. Oh my god! You know how hard it is to turn a black man red. <laughs> you doing it? She did it. She did it. She did it. No, You're Rabbi welcome. Shmuley is here. Is Rabbi Yay. Shmuley here? We're gonna give you counseling. He's not here yet. Oh, the good Rabbi Shmuley? Oh, yeah, Rabbi Shmuley is here. He's a good man. Yeah, we love Rabbi Shmuley. He, he's going to give the counseling to Sarah. Oh, my gosh, I'm so <laughs> Sarah excited. Sarah only wants to marry a nice Jewish boy. Yeah. We I mean, all she's a do. Nice cat. Everybody does. <laughs> well, I mean, Sherrod is marrying a nice Jewish woman. I wish. So there you my go. mother would be so happy. Are you happy. dating yeah. a nice Jewish girl? He is. I am. I got a Jewish girlfriend. Yeah? Yeah. See? Does she control you? No, she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, she's trying, but, but I'm still maintaining for now. I'm shocked. Yeah. I'm shocked. Now, Krista, do you have a gaggle? A what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all so said. So earlier in the show, we had somebody on. They have a whole thing where they have this idea that every woman, you're single, right, mm-hmm. should have a lot of men in her life from all walks of life who basically are men to flirt with until you meet the right guy. They'll either introduce you to the right guy or yeah. they'll be the right guy as long as you let them into your life. Yeah. Like, uh, what do you do on Fridays and Saturday nights now? Talk slow. Um, <laughs> well, I'm home alone. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it in here. I mean, it just you won't like, be tonight. Friday, Friday and Saturday night, to me, you know, it's the same as Monday and Tuesday. This is New York City. But right. I don't know. I mean, I hang out with friends. Like, I don't try to go out with the energy like, oh, my God, I have to meet my next boyfriend. If it happens, it happens. That's what... I'm a firm believer. I don't like to push it. Um, I try to put the good energy out there. But, you know, I mean, it, it's tough these days because now that I'm getting older, it's like as soon as one flag, I don't even think I give someone more than one chance anymore. Right. Why? So I got to play my because cards right. Because <laughs> I'm trying to learn. Don't blow it. That I'm trying to learn from my mistakes. And in the past, if as soon as that one red flag goes up, if I would have just listened to myself then, I would have saved myself. Months of heartbreak. All right. So, what so. are the red flags? Um, I think he has pictures of you he, naked on his walls. Days. That yeah. I like. <laughs> That's Having restraining cool. orders on I'm their record. No, yeah. but like he's a stalker. Oh, stalker! Like, no, 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 no. Like my friend's story. I, I can't mention her name, but that guy she went out with, and then he threatened Cynthia. to kill himself yeah. <laughs> if if she didn't marry him. Yeah, that's. Really I had a stalker like that. Mention any I actually had a okay, like we're going to solve See? all your problems because you Rabbi Shmuley Botea is here. Yay. He's just walked in. Hello there, Hello. and he is now here? running. Yes, he's running for Congress in New Jersey, and of course, I published. Yes, yes. He, I am endorsing Rabbi Shmuley. <laughs> I, I endorsed now, him now from the win. moment now he came. Definitely going to win. When he came For back sure. from the UK and he first came to America, I did the very first television interview with you. Do you remember that? You, Many uh, years. How ago. could I forget it? I remember all our television interviews together. I remember all the books we did together. I remember all our Friday night dinners together. 
Uh, and Memories. you are one of my favorite people in the whole world, and I've got to sit around like feeling like a piece of chopped liver waiting to be invited onto your show. Oh, which, stop it. Uh, <laughs> which, happens, which happens once a bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought you'd bring some sense to this conversation and some perspective. So we have Krista Ann here, Hello, who Christa has Ann. been on the cover of Playboy and Penthouse and uh, has problems in relationships now. Uh, it has affected her relationships. Uh, we have Sarah. We have <laughs> Sarah thing. who wants to marry a nice Jewish boy, was raised a Catholic, yep. oh. and only likes Jewish men. It's true. And Priscilla, a long-term relationship, broke up. She's kind of a party girl at the moment. <laughs> and Jeez. Sherrod is here for comic relief. Yeah. Right? When things get too okay, serious. At least I'm not here for comic relief. That's, <laughs> that's a relief, actually. <laughs> that is a relief. You can just be yourself, so, man. I got yeah. this. Yeah, you got it. I think okay. we should start with Sarah, because Sarah's actually the toughest one to solve. And so, Did Sarah oh, tell no. you we met? Yes. 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 We're, we're now Marie's we're on the met. Daily Beast the other day, yes, and she's are. a producer there. A great yes. segment. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, I was fun. Yes. So yeah. she... Has had, uh, you know, she's dated a lot of inappropriate men. Uh, no, but seriously, she was dating guys right. who were like. Isn't, isn't that like a redundancy? Inappropriate men? Uh, yes. Yeah, you know right? What? I have dated inappropriate men in my life. Yeah. Sarah, <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, Sarah dates guys who are like 30 years older. Uh, not anymore. Okay, not anymore. finally beyond older. that, you know, at 20, she was dating 50 year olds. Completely inappropriate for her. What? What? And yeah. and only Gerard yeah. thinks that's fine. Hold on. No, hold I on. don't. Hold oh, on. Okay, he doesn't think quiet, it's fine. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Never mind. And. Uh, had a thing for really good looking Latin men. Okay. okay. I can so that. she's kind you're of. Not, you're not into um, mono pack <laughs> Jewish men? <laughs> I'm a, like- I'm a monopack <laughs> Jewish man. But now she wants to marry a nice Jewish boy. Yeah, okay. I was thinking so, he can sign my papers when I convert to being Jewish, right? Right. The rabbi can for, sign my For the papers. right price, it can all be done. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, the, you know the story better than anyone. You've counseled many people uh, about their relationships and why they're in improper relationships, why they're doing things that are not leading them to the right men. And I thought that maybe you could do a little... Intervention here with Sarah. Well, one of the Uh-oh. books that we published together, and I want everyone to know that Judith published four of my books, and I consider her my publisher till today because she published the books that I really wanted to publish that were big risks. But one of them was uh, Why Can't I Fall in Love? And what I say there is there's two kinds of commitment phobia. All of us are a little bit commitment phobic today. How could we not be? You live in a generation where you see everybody filled with um, relationship heartache, uh, rampant divorce, and it's harder to uh, be vulnerable in a relationship because you're afraid of being hurt. There are two kinds of commitment phobes, active and passive. The active commitment phobe, the more serious a relationship becomes, the more they feel the heebie-jeebies, they start to sweat, and they want to pull out, even though there's no (laughs) rational reason to do so. But then there are those who are passive commitment phobes. They sabotage the relationship before it even begins. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) Sharon. So they, they date people who are inappropriate because then it cannot go anywhere, and they can have the escape of feeling, I'm not a commitment phobe because I'm totally invested, but you're invested with someone that you have no future with. I dated my cousin for three years. (laughs) (laughs) You're talking to me, ain't you, Rabbi? (laughs) I put a bullseye on you as soon as I walked in. (laughs) Felt it. Felt it, man. (laughs) All right. Why are people commitment phobic? Well, Judith, this is a a generation where we find it very difficult to really uh, transcend the confines of the ego. I mean, let's face it. We are one big narcissistic generation. I agree. Uh, you wake up in the morning, you tell the world uh, what you had for breakfast on Facebook. Do you think they really give one darn? They probably don't, but you're convinced they do. That's just amazing. Right. And so much is about me, 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 when really uh, a relationship is about the other. You know, it's like the guy that takes the woman out on a date and his conversation is me, 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 but enough about me. What do you think of me? Uh, we, a lot of women are getting tired of men as narcissists, but they are, I think, are not re- reflecting on the fact that they are reciprocating that kind of, uh, of self-absorption. Yes. I'll, I'll prove it. It's so interesting to me that rather than making a list when it comes to looking for a mate, rather than making a list of what we are missing in our lives so that we have a complementary relationship with someone who can enrich us, we actually make a list of what we have and we want someone who is our double, someone who has the exact <laughs> same thing. So you end up dating yourself just in the body of the opposite gender. And I hate right. myself. I don't want to date me. <laughs> I suck as a date. <laughs> well, a good lay, though. I'm a great lay. 
<laughs> You're not supposed to say that to a rabbi. Yeah. You're not supposed to say that to a rabbi, especially when it's a lie. Uh, because truth be told, it's not what I heard. Come on, rabbi. He has a Jewish girlfriend. Hey, it's like this show on Bravo is telling Judith about. There's this new show on Bravo called Misadvised, and it's with these three women who, who are, are very ill-advised. He, right. They're they're supposedly matchmakers and and dating advice columnists, and they none of them can find love themselves. And one of the main characters on the show in real life, she has a 72 point checklist for what she wants to find in a mate. I mean, it's the Ugh. most ridiculous thing I've and, ever and heard in my life. And only has a 10 point list. I have a zero point list. Yeah. I, I got mean, a one I, point list. You banging? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes or no? So I thought I thought your one point your one point list was. Do you have a pulse? <laughs> no, is that right? The road to hell. So Rabbi, you're you the say, worst wingman so, I've had in my life. <laughs> what do you What do you say to Sarah? Who wants to find love nearing 30, okay, yeah, and, and looking true, absolutely true. in all the wrong places? Okay, number one, um, I would stop going to social events for three weeks. Um, I would not find a, a, a means by which to assuage loneliness through casual social interactions. Love is a solution to humanity's oldest problem. The problem is loneliness. The solution mm-hmm. is love. Most young single women living on the island of Manhattan, like yourself, don't feel any kind of loneliness. You're in a you're in a dynamic profession. Uh, you're busy constantly. Uh, you're you're around noise all the time. Even when you come home, the TV's on, or you're on the internet. I go home and I'm with Judith. Yeah. Okay. Well, you need you, you need the company of nothing but a cat for about three weeks. Yeah. That's sexual. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, no comment. No comment. Yeah, okay. she has I a think dog. I need the same then, thing, Rabbi. And then because you because I, I think that all these tiny little casual interactions that we have with the opposite sex, it's like snacking during the day. You have a little bit of a snack here, a little bit of a snack there, and then you don't. And then you wonder why you have no appetite for dinner. You've been snacking the whole day. I don't think that we feel real loneliness today. In fact, I ask singles in these large rooms uh, filled with them, raise your hand if you're lonely. If you think a single hand g- goes up because what they We should do is- that here. Okay. Raise your hand if you're lonely. No, I think I am in that. Because it, it, I agree with you. That's why I actually didn't really agree with the gaggle argument because I think you can't fulfill yourself with – with like getting a little bit of attention here, here, there, and there, because the, what you really want is like one committed, serious relationship that would lead to marriage. You don't want something. Rabbi Shmueli, we had uh, authors in who wrote a book called The Gaggle, and the premise of the book is that you have lots of little relationships with men who, who basically are flirting with you through the day in, in your workplace, after work, that get you through the day and may actually turn into a relationship or introduce you to someone. That's their idea. You know, I really don't understand how this stuff is peddled these days. I mean, uh, honestly, I, I think it's I'm, out of I'm desperation. At, I'm, I'm at a loss. <clears throat> the kind of, with all due respect, I, I don't want to judge a book because I haven't read it and it's the first time hearing of it. But uh, I'm just amazed at the kind of advice that's being offered today. And notice that no matter how many of these self-help books we consume, it only gets worse. So the it's not as if the advice the is helping. Yeah. The all right. Now we have Krista blind. Ann, who has been cover of Playboy and Penthouse, a very beautiful young woman. Uh, yeah, I, when I walked in, I was going to say that. So my friends told me, meaning I don't know that. Yes, <laughs> yes. That was a poor attempt at humor, but it was an attempt on the left. I think you got to. Yes. Give, you have to give you credit for effort. For there. effort. Yes. Yeah. F- that's very funny. <laughs> I think. Whoa. I think that was. I think that was God getting even for me for being such a poor wingman. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, so God. Krista Ann has has trouble uh, finding appropriate men because of what she's done, and they at first going in think it's exciting. Right. That it's cool. They're dating a penthouse playboy. But then it becomes problematic for them. So she has a problem finding a lasting, loving relationship. Well, do you mind if I ask a couple of questions? Oh, of course. Even if they're a little bit personal? It's fine. Okay. So why did you take off your clothes? Was it for money or was it for attention? Um, I don't know. I, I thought that it sounded like a good opportunity at the time. Okay. So, so it, I, I think it was, it was career. I, I'm sure it's like a it, I'm sure it's a little bit of both, but I I was just, I was comfortable. Was it voyeuristic in any way or was it really about career? Of course. I think it's a little bit of everything. I mean, it's definitely career because honestly, I I wouldn't have done probably more than half of what I've done in my career because of literally, if you wanted to say taking your clothes off, um, the money is probably the smallest factor and then opportunities, career opportunities and whatever else. You know, I ask that because what I discover from women who are involved in the adult industry is that they slowly develop a certain contempt for men because they see the lowest side of men. They see men who are libidinous as opposed to men who are chivalrous. And they they find it difficult to sustain a relationship because you're 
men are beneath you. Uh, you control them just through the passive act of getting naked, and that's what, it's quite remarkable. And and they don't have to do anything to, to win agreeing. you. I gotta agree with you. I always <laughs> tell women. I tell women all the time. If you don't want to, if you I'm scared of your man cheating on you, let him go to a strip club. Those chicks hate us. They do. It's true. Because <laughs> they, they, they know us. you. Don't let them go to the mall. The mall is dangerous. <laughs> the strip club, they would kick us in our face if they could. It's true. By the way, I've even had women who work in strip clubs tell, tell me, you know, there is a disproportionately high number of women who work in the adult industry who have faced things like um, – uh, molestation. Like molestation, exactly. Yes. And for a lot of them, they tell you it's almost it's almost a form of payback. Yeah, it's it's how they get power Taking after power feeling back. disempowered. Yep. That's right. Yeah. yeah, Jenna Jameson is one of those mm-hmm. whose book you published. Yes, How to Make Love Like a Porn Star, a I, cautionary tale. I didn't read the book, but I was waiting for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so continue with your therapy. Well, that's the first question. Um, the second question is: What do you think is more important in a relationship, love or lust? Um, I mean, definitely love because it lasts longer. However, my my past relationships, because I've been in a lot of long term, um, the one thing that I can say that would have kept us together was the actual lust and sex. So it's kind of weird. Like I notice, like that's what I like look for in a person. Like if they make like every single time I see them, I want to like. You know, hook up with them or whatever. Oh my god, I'm tearing up right now. <laughs> you see tears in my eyes? I think it might be That's tears the one in my thing eyes. that for me like so, never like fades. That was the most romantic so it's thing super I've ever heard. Important. In my life. <laughs> so He's in love. The, the lust aspect. <laughs> A little bit. Okay, so well, it would seem to me that the appropriate answer is that both are essential because they they both capture mm-hmm. a different aspect of the relationship. What you want in a perfect relationship, to the extent that they can exist, is a lover who's your best friend. Best friend is love. It's about shared experience, shared values, shared dreams. Lust is the exact opposite. Lust, so love is created through familiarity. Lust is the opposite. Lust, lust is created through distance. How do you have a relationship that is about fam- familiarity that also has separation and distance? Well, the answer is that you are an individual who has uh, a mysterious self entering into re- – you're sharing part of you but not all of you. Um, and you have to sustain the part of you that remains mysterious, that remains elusive that remains somewhat transcendent, that's not fully exposed to the other person. And again, the problem with industries based on full exposure is that you often feel there's nothing left to explore, and the men feel there's nothing left to explore. When there isn't any mystery, lust disappears. It's quite interesting because lust is based on distance. Um, And I find that women who work in the adult entertainment industry, is that the best thing to call it, Judith? Uh, Yes, in the adult um, industry. Right, the the adult (laughs) industry. um, that they find it very difficult to sustain the balance between exposure on the one hand um, and familiar exposure and familiarity on the one hand and distance and selfhood on the other. They're usually too giving in a relationship yeah. um, because they're looking for almost instant intimacy because they know that the, their nakedness is not about intimacy. As you said before, it's a career choice. Yeah. And so what and should she do? I feel, you know? Date your Chira- What? <laughs> 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 what should you do? There's only one solution. I wish there were another, but there isn't. The only thing that can help you, uh, I'm sorry to say, is to buy my books. <laughs> <laughs> right. For starters. Of course. <laughs> then, then, is then you get, then you get the long books. version. No, but I mean, it's a version of what you told Sarah, isn't it? Where she's going to have to be alone for a while. And do a kind of cleanse. It's yeah, almost yeah a- exactly. It's a bit of a purging of, uh, of all the, these casual social interactions. Look, the problem with relationships today, really, if you want to sum it up, is that uh, they've lost their intensity. Um, and they're so casual. Everything is so casual. We've mm-hmm. created a unisex culture where men and women feel so comfortable around one another. And they're such experts in the other. Um, and the definition of an expert is someone who can spot flaws. Like if my wife sells diamonds uh, uh, for her livelihood, the, la- the dumbest thing I can do on her birthday is give her a diamond because she's going to look at it and she's going to see all the flaws. We, we give people things that they are not accustomed to so that they'll be impressed with it. Now, there used to be a little bit of separation between the sexes so that when a man met a woman, he was actually quite overwhelmed by her. But what all the nudity is doing, it's making men experts in a woman's body. And women feel more and more judged. The more judged they feel, the more inhibited they become. The more inhibited they become, the less confidence they have. The less confidence they have, the less sexy they are. Because all studies show that the sexiest quality in both a man and a woman to the opposite sex is, is confidence. It's how you yeah. carry yourself. Yeah. It's how you comport yourself. He's right about that. So, <clears throat> are you going to be posing nude again? 
I mean, I, I can't say no. High five! <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Don't let these people stop you and your dream. I just wanna, you I got just, a dream. Okay? My thing is, I usually just wait till, like, I think they at least like me for me before I, I actually even tell them what I do. I'm like, oh, I'm in the fashion world. Oh, that's convincing, by the way. <laughs> you had me. Fashion um, world. No, but if, the, if she continues to do this, what's the likely outcome? Um, I think it will be difficult to sustain a relationship because relationships has to have to have some of the ingredients that I that I mentioned. Let me just give you an example. This is not an ad for Apple because unfortunately, um, I don't really own Apple stock. I wish I did. I wish I had owned it years ago. But I'm holding an iPhone for those of you who are listening by radio. And uh, this is the most successful consumer product in the history of the world, probably. Here's what's interesting about it. Steve Jobs understood two things about attraction, lust, and allure. Because let's face it, this is a product people actually lust after. Right. When you wait for six hours on a line to buy one, you're right. lusting after it. He understood two things that are counterintuitive when it comes to marketing. Number one, he made it impossible to buy it. When it, when it first comes out, you can't buy one. Who's ever heard? Why buy the cow if you can get the milk for free? Right. It's like so the, the, more, Michael, the like the Jordan sneakers. That's what it's, <laughs> exactly the Jordans. Or what? Or uh, or let me. It's what Plato said: the Platonic relationship, where, which is not about consummation, what you can't have. That's the first thing he did. He made it impossible to buy it. The second thing he did: he Apple never announces anything about the products they're working on until the day they are they arrive. Meaning mysterious. You have to speculate. The more you speculate the more you're engaged in this mental process of discovery. Now, women once had those two things. There was a little bit of mystery. They were a little bit undefined, and men wanted to explore them. Um, their relationship was an adventure of discovery, of knowledge, because they didn't know a lot. And the second thing was women are slightly un were slightly unavailable. Well, take those two things away. Make women completely available through whether it's pornography, whether it's I think a third of couples statistically have sex on the first date. Create instant availability, and you've undermined lust. Secondly... You take away the mystery where men are so, men know so much about women. I mean, listen to male conversations. They'll talk to you about her legs and uh, her cheekbones and and, and her, her chest. It's it's remarkable how much they know. I think both of those qualities mean that lust has been undermined. And I'll prove it. Most men say when you ask them what's more important in a relationship compatibility or attraction, they'll say it's compatibility. That's fascinating. If it's compatibility, then they ought to be gay. Because right. two guys have a lot more in common with each other than they would ever have with a woman. Yeah. How many of you know... Uh, any of the women know... Bring back the no, who, who was the MVP in the recent NBA Finals? Anyone know? What's his name? Um, What's his name? Okay, okay. So <laughs> don't ask me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about LeBron that. James. Okay, and how many of the men... How many of the men here know whether there's a sale going on at Bloomingdale's right now? It's 40% off. <laughs> what? Wait, what? I don't know. I mean, I don't know that. I just went shopping. <laughs> so if, if relationships are about compatibility, then rather than seeing the 10% um, homosexual to 90% heterosexual divide that there is in America, we'd see the opposite. We'd exactly. see a 90% homosexual to 10% heterosexual. But r really, relationships are based on attraction. It's just that we so narrowly define attraction as something of the body when attraction really is about... The masculine energy being drawn to the feminine energy. It's something much more holistic. I All agree. Right. Krista, did you learn anything? I did. Well, what I did notice is that what he said um, about um, like immediately seeing people's flaws, because that's what I was talking about with like the red flags. Like I see it in one second. You can't fool me anymore, and I'm not giving you even the benefit of the doubt. Right. right. I'm that's what it. made I think that's what made <laughs> Starbucks so successful is why does anyone b spend 5 bucks on a cup of coffee? That's unbelievable. I think they white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running for office. Are, no comment. We're um, going to have to take a break. Okay. Uh, Krista and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And uh, read Rabbi Shmuley's books and uh, Sharad, always a pleasure. Thank you. We may drag you back in. I live right up the block. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away. When we come back, the author of Why You're Not Married is going to join the conversation from Los Angeles. And this is Judith Regan. Don't go away. We will be right back. The Judith Regan Show, Sirius XM Stars.
This is Judith Reed, and we're back. Rabbi Shmuley Botea is here with us, running for Congress in New Jersey. It's a foregone conclusion I'm going to win, so you can call me congressman already. Congressman Shmuley (laughs) Botea is here in the house, and we are so grateful to have you here. Gregory Gilderman is joining the conversation, author, editor, and columnist. Hello. Hey. And you wrote a book called She's the One. The yes. surprising truth about what makes a woman a keeper. Yes, it sold uh, literally tens of copies. And, uh, <laughs> and believe why you can not? get on Amazon for a penny. And ro- Well, of course. And Bryce Gruber. Hi. Hello there. How nice are you? you? TheLuxurySpot.com. She knows all about luxury living. And from Los Angeles, we have Tracy McMillan, who's the author of Why You're Not Married Yet, The Straight Talk You Need to Get, The Relationship You Deserve. Tracy, Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining the conversation. I understand you are now doing a reality show. Well, I'm working on a dating show called Ready for Love, and it's going to be on NBC. It's coming this winter, either December or January, somewhere in there. And it's the show. I can't say very much about it, but I can tell you it is riveting. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's like the whole conversation about love and marriage and relationships, it's it's. Really, really good. I'm okay. loving working on it. Now, why you're not married yet, and I'm just going to go very quickly through the table of contents here. These are the okay. reasons. These are the reasons, and Rabbi will be paying close attention to this. <laughs> here are the reasons. You're a bitch. You're shallow. You're a slut. You're crazy. You're selfish. You're a mess. You hate yourself. You're a liar. You're a dude, and you're godless. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, exp- uh, can you elaborate on that? <laughs> yes, I can. Okay, the first Because I'm feeling say... insulted. <laughs> <laughs> well, the very first thing I need to say is that I'm a television writer. Before Tracy even says this, Tracy, please tell us what you really think. <laughs> no, exactly. Don't hold back. Well, I'm a, Don't hold back. I'm a television writer. So when I sat down to write this, it was really an essay that was like, this is me telling what I really think, except for it was also with a lot of artistic license. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're trying, a, to, get, you're trying to get attention. I there's a lot of satire yeah. in this, you know, but I have a real message now that I have your attention. Right, because I'm, I'm wondering is, if you actually agree with the rabbi, uh, but have a different way of saying it. Yes. I mean, what the real message is, is whatever's going on in your love life that's not working you have to take responsibility for it. And when you get real and get honest, things can start to change from there. And as long as you're blaming the world or men suck or, you know, anything like that, it's, nothing's going to change. And that's what this book is really all about. Okay, but the number one, uh, the number mm-hmm. one reason you're not married is that you're a bitch. Now, this is, this is by the way, I've been called that many, many times. Sure, uh, and sure. They, Including the cover of New York Magazine. They actually wrote okay. a piece called Why Bitches Have Feelings, which I thought, you know, <laughs> it, it's perfectly okay in the culture to be misogynistic to the bone and to say these insulting things about women. Our book, mm-hmm. our book, Hating Women. That's Hating why... Women. I mean, no. you did a whole study. Rabbi Shmuley did a whole study on this. No, but that you I mean, I understand, being, bit, I understand you're being, I understand you're being flip. Right. Yes, I, I am, but I also think that there is a real thing of being a bitch, and there's a thing of being a dick too. It's like, are we saying that there is no that this isn't like a real thing, and that it doesn't really harm ourselves and our relationship? How would you define it? I would say it's about anger and defensiveness. You know, it's like when I'm walking into my relationships, being angry and defensive, and in, and instead of like, uh, ex, you know. Because I've been hurt, mostly. I mean, it's not like I've never been a bitch. I look at these things, and I see a list of 10 spiritual challenges that all women have to deal with in terms of relationships, okay. whether you're now, single, married, or Greg, what. Greg. Yes. <laughs> you're a single man. I am. Okay. And uh, there was a book, by the way, Why Men Love Bitches. There was another yeah, book that was a big bestseller. Yeah, they have low self-esteem. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Are, you, are, are these the qualities in a woman that turn you off and make you run away? Uh, well, when, when you phrase them like that, probably so. But um, when I used to write a relationship advice column for Cosmo, I found that most women were pretty good at beating themselves up and that there were actually a lot of things in their lives that were maybe – uh, limiting them in meeting a lot of new people. So, for example, something as simple as friends introducing friends to date, um, that doesn't really happen that much anymore. Um, there were a lot of women who would just make really snap judgments around Internet dates. Were we talking earlier? Someone said she just takes a few seconds before she makes a judgment about a guy. Right. So I think you can put yourself at a big – what's that? 
that's your shallow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but the men are shallow too. The men are shallow too. <laughs> yeah, but I think when I there's, know, but it's not working for them either. <laughs> right, you, exactly. If, especially with <laughs> online dating, when you have absolutely no basis for meeting anyone whatsoever, I think it's a little bit worth it to sometimes give someone a second chance. Where, where do you meet women? Uh, well, you basically uh, on the radio. Yeah, on the radio. <laughs> Callers, are you out there? Hello, hello, hello. hello Nicole. Chicago, yeah. Los Angeles. No. Are you Jewish? Because Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, you know, <laughs> Sarah only date can Jewish I, men. Though. Wait, wait, wait. Greg can and I, just, I work yeah, together this at is the Daily just Beast, nuts. So can I, I have were... learned so much about Sarah. This is just absolutely <laughs> oh, bizarre. No, that's to be... scary. Now we can't talk to each other at work anymore. Okay, now <laughs> Bryce, you don't look like you tan a lot. That's Bryce, more her. Bryce, you're married. I am right. You recently, so recently married oh, and pregnant. Thank you. Right with your second okay. child, second child. kid. Right. <laughs> and did you have a hard time finding the right man? Uh, is he the right man? Yeah, he's the right man. And he teaches me new things every day. And some days I absolutely hate him for it. And other days I look at him with complete love and say, thank you for being in my world. And I don't know how I live this long without you kind of thing. But do you have any of these qualities? Are you a bitch, shallow, slut, crazy, selfish, mess, liar? Are you a dude? Um, <laughs> do you I, think, have- I think the bitch thing might apply from time to time. But he's Israeli, so I think he's into it. <laughs> <laughs> It works for you. It's working yeah. for you. And we also have a language just barrier. Gave a so thumbs he, up out there. Yeah. <laughs> we have a major language barrier. So So whatever you do is fine with he him. Might, okay. He, yeah. He doesn't know. He's what been you're calling doing. me like sort of inappropriate names for like a year and I didn't even know that they were inappropriate. I there's like a word in Hebrew, Kartzia, which I thought was like a nice thing. I thought he was like calling me like a little tulip Cutie or pie. something. Yeah. yeah. And apparently it means flea. Like you're an annoying <laughs> flea. <laughs> like, That's beautiful. All right, That's right. Honest. Right. You've seen I, feel, it all. I feel turned on already. <laughs> <laughs> the rabbi has seen it all, heard it all, and written about it all. What's your take? Well, on look, why uh, you're not married? I, I mean, come on. The reason why so little operates and works in our society, marriage being one of them, is that we're just a culture of extremists. Uh, politics. I'm running for Congress. Uh, the, the parties can't get along because of hyperpartisanship. And the reason why people aren't dating and marrying is because they're extremists. And uh, with all due respect, and Tracy, I mean no offense, although from what you write, maybe you would actually. Uh, uh, it, it want me to say that I'm I'm I'm, I'm causing offense. Um, one extreme is men are all bastards, and uh, the other extreme is that women are all bitches. These are just extremes, and we're and, and it doesn't and it, it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't just, just wait just a moment just just a moment. Now, now now you're getting defensive. You said before <laughs> no, that women shouldn't be defensive. I'm just not saying that. I'll but you're not but you're not letting me speak, and you can correct yeah, my ahead. misinformation in just a moment. It'll be okay, I'll, I'll still be here, and the world will still. No, you know, funny the Earth will still be Go rotating ahead. on its axis. But will Sarah have um, a date? That's the no. <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, I have a feeling those chances I, are fading. <laughs> Go ahead, Rabbi. The reason why Judith and I published this book, uh, "Hating Women," is that we both felt that the warm, nurturing quality in the world in general, but as captured in women, is being trampled upon. That no one's nurturing anymore. Thank everybody's you. everybody's using their elbows. Um, so, to, so to say that women are bitches and sluts, and this is why you're doing all this, and point this accusatory uh, finger, I think that's going to be p- people even more defensive. The reason people are not connecting is they're not vulnerable. It's the exact opposite. They don't want to show vulnerability. So attacking them that's is going to ensure. That's exactly what I say. In but this but chapter. again, but again, you're not letting me speak. I, I will be. I will. I will be brief. Let it finish, and then you'll um, respond. You're not. You're not going to get people to be more vulnerable by calling them names. By putting them on the defensive, by making them feel that they have even uh, worse self-esteem than they already have. On the contrary, you're going you're gonna to get them to be in a relationship by convincing them that their life can be a blessing to somebody else. That's you exactly have to, what the You have to inspire. About. Well, I don't understand how you inspire people by saying you know they're what? a She's bit like shallow a- and a slut. <laughs> now, maybe I'm, now, maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe, inspira- maybe I just well, got off the inspiration train. That's possible. But I, I, I actually think it's time that we sort of turn people on to make them believe in love again and not Thank just attack and attack and attack. I mean, everything has been coarsened in America. The political dialogue is coarse. The relationship dialogue is coarse. Everything. Reality TV is coarse. It's all so damn coarse. So, and and while, I, while I hope, God willing, that your show is riveting and God bless you, I hope that, even more importantly, can it be inspirational? You know, Oprah Winfrey created the most successful television show in, in, in history by being inspirational. Does nobody ever think about that anymore? To inspire to people to book. bring forward the best. Well, I, I got. I got. You read it, you'll just see those. Are the when you send me a free copy, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so Tracy, and then once you get into it, this is a book about walking a spiritual path in a relationship, and I'm all about the inspiration. It's just that I wrote this piece 
as a television writer who is here to entertain. When I first read it, I read it in the 99 Feet Comedy Club, and it was awesome. And then I put it in the world, and then the context gets moved around. You know, you really just have to read it. Well, that's wonderful. But what, why, why do we have to say that it's entertaining to call women a bitch? I mean, that's the problem with the pervasiveness of misogyny yeah, today. Well, you know but it's like, it's like so it, it becomes this way. I mean, the, the reason she's doing this is because this is how you get everyone's attention. Exactly. It's like writing a it's copy. Not a, it's not, it's, it's copywriting. In, in, it's write advertising. Why you're not married. I didn't set out to it's, do that. What I set out to she's do tra- was, This is how you get attention now. No, it's the a culture. shortcut. It's a shortcut to get attention. And but look, it doesn't is, work and it doesn't last. But and the loudest, it has no longevity. The brashest, the yet. most brazen, the ones that are wrapped in razzle dazzle, the ones that you know seem to insult are the ones that get attention. And this is the culture we're now living in. And I think the question we should ask ourselves is: Can we dial it back and still be heard? Right. That is the question. Uh, we have Dennis Hoff calling from the Bunny Ranch and Cammie Parker. Now, there's a guy who won't make the <laughs> yeah, dialogue perfect. more coarse. Dennis, and, uh, are you there? Inspirational I'll and gentle. I'll this out. Uh, now, Dennis, there's a book. Uh, and is Cammie on the line? Hey. Hi, Cammie. How are you? Great. How are you? Why you're not married yet. Now, Cammie is in love with Dennis. Dennis owns the Bunny Ranch, mm-hmm. uh, which is a legal house of prostitution in, in Nevada, in Nevada right? many yeah. of them. I think yes. they're looking for a rabbi, and, aren't they? And Cammie, <laughs> yes. And Cammie. Well, but I'm not looking for the Bunny Ranch just yet. <laughs> so, uh, maybe after my congressional run, give me a couple of months. <laughs> Cammie has worked at the Bunny Ranch for a couple of years and is also Dennis's girlfriend. Cammie would like to get married. Dennis is commitment phobic for a variety of reasons. And uh, Dennis... Talk to us about the the will I get married or won't I get married conversation that you and Cammie have. Well, we, we, we've we never really gotten too serious about it, but I think my, my trouble with it is is that I don't have a problem getting married, but I had a real serious problem with, with divorce. Uh, I'm just not going to go through that headache again. And Cammie... And just don't divorce me, silly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> How do you respond to that? <laughs> you know, I, I see myself... Uh, uh, you know, with my career and, and, and making money. And, you know, I don't know how I would have had the five children she wants to have and, and go and speak at Oxford like I did last month. Nanny, did you really? Jerry. Yeah, he was at the, he got the Oxford in, Union? Yes, he got invited. And uh, oh. Rabbi used to run that. I well, I, I, ran, I, ran, I ran the second largest society at Oxford. Did a lot of stuff at the Union. So you uh, did you enjoy Oxford? Yeah, I mean, I did, it's nice standing there with six U.S. presidents and the Dalai Lama, Mother Teresa, and Albert Einstein have spoken. And you know, I, I it you was know, so you different. left, uh, but, you left me off that list. Today. Okay, but do we ask yeah. Cammy why you're not married yet? Maybe you should talk to Cammy. There you go. Cammie. Go ahead, Cammy. You're the <laughs> rabbi here. Yeah. Why is he not married yet? Why are you not married yet? Do you ask yourself that question? I mean, sure. I, of course, you're going to think that there must be something wrong with you. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you at all. It, it, it's just that, no, there's nothing wrong with you at all. Cam, I mean, Cammie, are, do you work at, at the Bunny Ranch as well? You work there? Yeah. Um, do, would you continue working there if you married Dennis? I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think that I would want to have a husband that would want to share me with other people. Probably not, no. And, and but being a girlfriend is, he, you think he still wants to share you because... Is yeah, you're a prostitute, one of the title of chapters? It's different. In the... Marriage is very different. It's very serious. Yeah, but you guys are in a serious relationship, are you not? Or is it totally... Yeah, but it's not as serious as being married. Oh, I mean, oh, I'll oh, I agree. together for a hundred years if I you're agree. not married, you're I, not. I, I agree, but how do you transform the relationship from something that's more casual to more serious answer exclusivity right so if people are giving you money not necessarily well isn't that what a relationship means isn't that what you mean by serious emotional exclusivity. every 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 relationship is defined by two qualities <laughs> primacy and exclusivity you become the one and the only and that dog in the background knows exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> it, says, it says in the talmud it says it, it says it says in the Talmud that if you that if you speak a truth to someone who owns uh, a bunny ranch and the dog barks, it proves that you're saying the truth. <laughs> and this was said two thousand years ago before anyone could predict this happening on Sirius XM. So, um, Cami, I mean, don't you believe that you deserve primacy and exclusivity to be the one and the only? And wouldn't you you would demand that of Dennis? And I would assume he would demand that of I you. I would no? never demand anything of him. Well, I don't, I don't, I guess Maybe that's know. the problem. Uh, yeah. That is the I problem. I guess so. That probably Why is do you want problem. to be in a relationship with somebody who isn't giving you ultimately what you want? 
And also, what's the point this of marriage if, if you're with out with other people? What does monogamous do I don't think there are any monogamous men. You either lie about it or you don't. <laughs> well, 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 is well, Dennis monogamous? Well, well, wait a second. Let's, let's, make some, let's make something absolutely clear. Okay. Women, whenever we say that men are not monogamous, we perpetuate a lie. The lie being that men are so much more sexual than women. It's precisely the opposite. Women are much more sexual. Male sexuality is a pathetic joke compared to female sexuality. Of course. Men are, are uni-orgasmic. Right after a sexual climax, you have a corpse in bed with you. Okay? Yeah. You Gregory, are, you're, you're, he's, he's crying over here. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm shocked that the rabbi is... <laughs> it's Gregory that I was referring to. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> rabbi, you're frightening me. And you're, uh, <laughs> you want a high five again? No, no high five. And women... And I'm, I'm women, moving away from the rabbi. We just have a few minutes left. Go ahead. And women are just getting revved up. Women are much more sexual than men. And what, what sustains a man's monogamy, so you can actually believe in it, Cammy, what sustains a, ma- a man's monogamy is to explain explore the full panoply, the full color, of his wife's sexuality. When a man gives his wife the erotic interrogation and asks her about all the women that, all the, all, sorry, all the men that she's attracted to, uh, all the men that she may fantasize about, all the men that she may arouse herself with, that's what gives him the variety he needs without cheating because it's so much more erotic. But because we have no understanding of human sexuality anymore, and it's basically been reduced to stupid, two-dimensional, boring, insipid, predictable, monotonous porn, porn, that's why we make this mistake. The men are not monogamous. This is nonsense. Women are so much more sexual than men, but we have desexualized them. Rabbi, but we, we have snuffed I agree out. with you, but we have self-control. That's the difference. Rabbi, All, right. Rabbi, All right. Very quickly, Dennis, your rich. response. Rabbi, I'm very rich. And it's because of married men, and thank God Are for Are you marriage. contributing to my campaign? Thank God for marriage, because I knew wouldn't be here if they weren't married. <laughs> there you go. All right, Dennis and Cammy, thank you so much for calling in. Bye-bye, darling. Thank you, thank you. All right, Gregory, did you learn anything? Uh, yes. How to improve your love life. Uh, yes, and uh, that uh, even Dennis Hoff has a dog. I'm not sure. I think <laughs> yes, uh, several dogs. Who do- may or may not agree Where with the rabbi. Where are you going to meet women now? Um, well, you know, I am seeing someone now. Is that how I was sold here as like the totally single guy? Because <laughs> I, I don't really, like, I your producer see, led you astray you, here. No, no, I, love no, that, I but, didn't but, lie. But, dude, I love the expression. He is seeing. What the heck does that mean? Yeah. Where did that word that come means. from? You're, he's you're dating. seeing me right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's dating someone. I, I, I'm not seeing her in that sense, Rabbi. Oh. So, <laughs> I'm just literally being able to see someone. No, but see, that's the whole point. We love, we love using the kind of language that connotes distance. I'm only seeing her. All right, very quickly, uh, this article in Atlantic brings back the old argument about we can't have it all. Have, have you seen this? Very controversial. We article. can't work. We can't, uh, you know, have children at the same time. But Bryce is doing this because this is such a crazy thing. We had this conversation 40 years ago about how women can't have it all and blah, 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 blah. I, this article had a sleep. million hits on the, on, <laughs> on the Atlantic. And it's written by a Princeton professor who basically – said, you know, I had to go back home. My 14-year-old son was having some issues. She was working in the Obama administration. It's much easier to be an academic because, you know, working in government, you're traveling, you're away from home, you're gone all the time. And, uh, you know, women ultimately want to put their children first. And that's why they're not at the highest echelons of power now. I think if I had five children, I'd be in a very different position. I don't, I don't think it would be fair of me to do this. But right now I have one three-and-a-half-year-old who spends a good portion of his day in a preschool down the street from where I live and work and, you know, another one on the way. And truthfully, I don't sleep a whole bunch. But I think it's very possible. And I do think if you find that balance, it's really healthy for the relationship to have something outside of your home that you're you're tapping into because then you sit at a dinner table you've got something to talk about and it's it's sort of that mysterious quality that the rabbi was talking about oh you have this life outside of me i kind of want to know what's going on in it that's interesting i respect you I'm, right i'm into and Greg, you that sounds can wonderful can women have it all can I men think have so. it all men can have it all <laughs> women can have it all it's just uh, very tiring <laughs> <laughs> rabbi i have a 15 year old son and i've had to make a lot of choices around work for sure i I don't think Is that why you became no, a TV writer? Well, I started out, I took the first two and a half years off. Then the next five to eight years, I worked part-time. Right. And then I, I was poor. I drove old cars. And then when my kid was 10, I went back to work full-time, started a career in television writing. Yeah. And now, yeah. you know what I mean? What I'm saying is my solution has been to um, be very responsive and to have a lot of faith that expansion in my career would be there 
when the time was right for my child also. I don't all think right. people can we have it all. We are out of time. <laughs> we can have a little bit of it all over a long <laughs> lifetime. But Tracy time. McMillan, thank you so much for being here. Why You're Not Married Yet is the name of the book. Rabbi Shmuley Botea, running for Congress. Shmueleyforcongress.com. Uh, there you go. Uh, good luck with that. Thank and you. Uh, you. Gregory Gilderman for advice. Thank you. The Daily Beast. Yes. And Bryce Gruber, writer, blogger, New York Socialite. Visit our website, theluxuryspot.com. This is Judith Regan. Have a great week. Sexy and I know it. I'm sexy and I know it. Check it out. Check it out.